This is Isaiah 33 and 6. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and the strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh is his treasure. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostle elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the brother Shati from the Chicago camp. Coming back to you with what I hope is another quick and edifying sit down. Once again, this is Isaiah 33 and 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation, the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. And this precept is inspired by an observation that I've made during this whole COVID-19 quarantine and a video that I saw on the Common Sense Show. And it's in regards to the... the the mental weakness of people being able to deal with cabin fever because what you have to recognize is that yes as humans we need to move and get out and get going you know it's something that we naturally want to do but the thing is what happens when those things are taken away what do you do when you're forced in a situation where you can't do the things that you normally do? How do you cope mentally with it? And the thing is, for a lot of people, hey man, this cabin fever is going to be the, the, the catalyst that's going to cause a lot of death, a lot of murders, and a lot of riots. Because you have a lot of people out here that don't believe in the Lord and are not grounded in this truth. All right, because if you're a man of the Lord and you're grounded in this truth, all right, the words of this uh, uh, scripture, the words of the scripture are going to be able to keep your mind stable. All right, it's going to keep your faith boosted to where you're not going to go out of your mind. You're not going to have that urge to want to rebel and do something silly. All because you can't control your urges from going outside. Okay? And the thing is, there's many people in America who don't have this. And because of that, there's going to be a lot of violence and aggression that people are going to let out when they can't take this cabin fever no more. And I looked it up in the dictionary to make sure I had this right. And it says cabin fever psychology a condition of restlessness and irritability caused by being in a confined space because you have to realize it doesn't matter if you're on a place that's 800 square feet 8,000 square feet 18,000 square feet okay if your mind is not rooted and grounded in the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you will not make it. You will not have the mental and spiritual fortitude to be able to grind out a condition that is very uh, uh, uncomfortable mentally and spiritually. All right. And so I want to play this video by Dave Hodges uh, starting at the four minute and 22 second mark. And he's given a brief commentary on a statement that Chuck Norris had made in regards to the mental health of America and is talking about uh, uh, basically cabin fever. So without further ado, we're going to let this play get some more scripture and close it out. I really agree with him. He said, America is going crazy. And I also had a discussion today with a senior federal law enforcement official, and he didn't know about the Chuck Norris comment because he said the exact same things to me that Chuck Norris just wrote about. And he's crowding people too close together, they get cabin crazy. He said, look, they're already fighting over toilet paper, what's gonna happen when they run out of food? Bingo, how do you control people? Food. Uh-huh, and Chuck Norris is afraid this is gonna spread into widespread civil unrest and eventually civil war. I have to say I share the same exact concerns as uh, Chuck Norris. And also my advisor, one of my advisors who's uh, in one of the agencies, saying exactly the same thing. Crowding together people like rats, 
you know, basically squeezing them on the food, squeezing them to their last dime, who isn't going to break? It's just a matter of time, this segment here. And they probably have charted this. They have a little line there like they did in the movie Outbreak. Remember the Ebola movie from 1993 with Dustin Hoffman and Donald Sutherland? By day one, this many will have it. And they had the graph by day two, by day three. Pretty much the whole country had spread across. Well, we have that graph here too. When will people start to crack psychologically? Day one, day two, day three, week one, week two. And you can pretty well start to predict at what percent, what percentage of people will begin to go absolute stir crazy and begin to cause problems. And here's another thing that no one's talking about. And I don't believe that Chuck Norris nor my source, I know he didn't say anything about this. This is really concerning and I'll tell you why it's concerning. You have somewhere between about 18 to 20 percent of the country on psychotropic medications of various types ranging from uh, serious meds from schizophrenia to, to depression, okay, to anxiety. What's going to happen if the supply chain doesn't keep them going? You can't just go off cold turkey without some really, really bad results. That's a problem, isn't it? It's a big problem. We could see some real aberrant behaviors in our society. So here's what I'm telling you. Number one, pray. God protects his flock. Number two, make sure you're prepped. Number three, make it difficult. Well, that's pretty much the gist of the uh, video, but he's right. Okay, without the Lord, a lot of you people, that this cabin fever is going to eat you up. Already you got people who are finding out that the person that they're living with, they don't want to be with their ass anymore. All right, you're going to have a lot of pent up anger, a lot of pent up frustration, and they're going to let it out. And the thing is, you got folks going crazy already, and it's not even bad. Like you said, they fighting over fucking toilet tissue. I mean, seriously, toilet tissue? He said, how much more are they going to do this? When the food stops. Basically how, how much more. Are they going to go crazy. And release that anger. And aggression. And fear. When shit really gets bad. That's why the scripture says. And uh, I believe it's. I want to say it's in Luke. I could be wrong. But it talks about the green tree. Like if people behave themselves. In this matter. When. Things really aren't that bad, even though it's uncomfortable. How much more when shit really gets bad? All right, we're gonna go to uh, it's in the New Testament. Let me uh, yeah, it was Luke, and this is uh, Luke 23 and 31. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? All right. When things are plenteous, when you can still go out and do certain things, even right now, even though we're under martial law, they say you can still run around the block. You just can't congregate. You can still bike. You can still go to Walgreens or CVS or... Uh, go to the grocery store. They say you can still do these things. You can even still go visit friends if you want to. All right. These are things we can still do. And you got folks losing their mind. How much more when this place is on full fucking lockdown? When you can't leave the block, you can't walk across the street, you can't even. Say, hey, neighbor, what's going to happen when all that is completely shut off? People are going to lose their mind. You will have Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. And you know what? Let me get that. This has been coming out a lot in my sit down. Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. 
and the 14th verse. Second Ezra 15 and 14, it says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, a violent uprising, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, their governors, their mayors, their senators, the presidents, and the course of their actions shall stand in the power. And a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. And what was the pride of these people? Well, fuck what you got to say. We still going to go out. We still going to go out on St. Patty's Day. We still going to uh, uh, congregate at the lakefront. All right. JB and Mayor Lightfoot said, OK, you, you want to do that shit? OK, I got something for you. Fuck me. OK, fuck you. Now you can't leave. Now you're going to get arrested. Now you're going to get fined. Now you're going to be uh, uh, jailed and prosecuted as a criminal. Now you have a situation where now folks are scared to go out. But the thing is, they're catching that cabin fever. They've done so much jogging, so much bicycling. All right. They're barely holding it together with the person that they with because now they realizing she probably can't cook. All right. Poor conversationalist. She probably learning. Hey, man, he's an alcoholic. He don't like to wash his ass. Whatever the case may be, folks are truly learning about who they're with. And they're just like, man, I'm stuck with this mother joker. Oh, man. Whatever the scenario is that's making them uncomfortable. All right. It, it's happening. And you couple that on uh, on top of the, the, the cabin fever. Hey, man, this is going to be a rough. Hey, man, a lot of you just ain't going to make it plain and simple. A lot of you will not make it. A lot of you all will fulfill this because you are not grounded in the Lord, especially our people. There's only going to be so many blunts. There's only going to be so many uh, 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 women that you can be with. There's only so many times that you're going to be able to make it outside and do some wickedness, shoot up a nigga or do what other madness. It's only going to be so much that you're going to be able to get away with and do before you just lose your mind. You're going to say the hell with Lightfoot. The hell with Pritzker. All right. We got to do our own thing. Now it's just time to unleash the beast. And when that happens. Whew, amen. You best better hope the Lord with you. So that's all I wanted to say on that. Once again, you know, I want to make this short and I want to give all glory honor, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostle elders, a great millstone who rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, we're going to say Shalom.